Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be kind of like a little bonus compliment video to the uh, 1989 Batwing analysis I did. And uh, something that I forgot to mention in that video is that uh, so, um, this set is going to be coming out on November 1st, uh, 2020. So we're going to have a little bit of a wait to buy the set. But I just wanted to mention that. But this video is going to be a minifigure analysis on the, the figures that come with the Batwing. Now, I talked about them briefly in the analysis, but uh, I didn't talk about them very much because... Um, obviously there, it would be forever if I talked about them, but in this video, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get, you know, my opinions on the, all the figures included in the set, and there's three of them, and they're all great, and, uh, well, let's, uh, dive right in. So, we're going to take a look at, uh, all the figures here. Now, obviously there's not a lot of figures for this set, uh, because, you know, UCS-style large sets like this usually come with one or two figures, but obviously this set includes three which is a great amount. And uh, let's start um, off with the actually the stand here. This is actually supposed to represent the end of Gotham Cathedral, or kind of the edge of that building in Gotham in Tim Burton's Batman. So this is what the set is based on. And obviously the 89 Batman movie is my favorite Batman movie of all time. And uh, I love it to death. But uh, um, let's talk about the figures. Uh, the least interesting one here is definitely Batman. I mean, we've already seen this Batman another time in the 89 Batmobile set, which that set is also going to get a figure analysis as well in a couple more videos. But, uh, uh as well as this one, this set is going to get a couple more videos as well, besides this one. Um, because I love the Batwing and the Batmobile from the 89 movie so much, but... Uh, the Batman here, he's not exclusive necessarily, but he's kind of exclusive to these two sets. So you can get him in the Batmobile as well. He's literally the exact same figure. Um, but uh, this Batman, the, spe the special thing about him is he has the uh, exclusive kind of cape and cowl. So his mask and his cape are kind of molded in one, uh, you know, one full piece. So they're kind of molded together. Um, I'm going to kind of give you an example of the Batman in real life. So you can see that there. This is what the, the Lego Michael Keaton Batman looks like. So this is the same one in the set. And you can see that it's it's a rubberized material and it can't the cape can't really bend. It's um, a bit unfortunate because it's like a rubber piece so it doesn't bend very easily. But I just wanted to show that if you're wondering what the back of him looks like. And this thing, this whole thing is just one piece. So if you take it off, it's just, uh, it just, uh, it, there's no, you know, cowl underneath or anything. It's just, this whole thing is just one piece. So as soon as you lift it off, um, you can see the rest of the figure. Uh, but something that's really disappointing here is that we don't get, like, an exclusive, um, face for the Teton Batman. Like, I know that Lego can't really, um, do, like, I don't know, um, if they can really do, like, different faces for different Batman. Like, I know that they've done a lot of different Batman faces, but I think it would have been really nice if we got, like, the Keaton lips and maybe his real eyes showing through his cowl instead of just the white, uh, the white triangles and then the mouth. It, they've reused the uh, 2012 Batman head, which does not work here. I think that's the, the biggest con of this Batman is that he doesn't look like Michael Keaton, really. He just looks, he just looks kind of generic, honestly. Um, and in the movie, Batman doesn't have white eyes. He has actual human eyes showing through with makeup. And I think that would have been a lot better to include here and obviously give him the Keaton lips. But I don't know. Um, maybe you could do like a custom of that. But it's kind of a shame that the second time around we weren't given an, an exclusive Michael Keaton head to put under that cowl. But oh well. Um, yeah, we can dream, I guess. But... You got the Batman logo, obviously, from the 89 movie, which looks awesome. He's got the Batarang. No leg printing, uh, except for Joker does have that. But um, he's got, the obviously, the ripped abs or the muscle-like uh, suit underneath. He got the utility belt. And he looks great. Uh, unfortunately, if you want this Batman to sit down or anything, uh, he's kind of just made to stand and just be displayed like that because his, his cape is kind of made to look like it's swaying in the wind. I'll kind of give you that example again. So you can see the cape is kind of made to look like it's, you know, flowing and, you know, flying in the wind and just moving gently. Um, but I think that um, it definitely would have been better to have, like, maybe a, a, a movable cape. 
but I understand why they did this because the cape and the cowl were kind of the same. They were kind of molded together in the same thing. Or sorry, am I, am I making any sense? Um, in the movie, Michael Keaton's cowl was attached to his cape, and that's the same thing here. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's because the cape and the mask are the same. They're just molded together. Which I think is brilliant looking. I just wish that he could sit down. So if you want this Batman to sit down in the Batwing, you're going to have to pick a different version. Because uh, you're going to have to pick one with like the newer cape or something. Because this Batman will not sit down very well with that mask on. With the cape, with the cape as well. Which is kind of unfortunate. But I mean, 90% of people that buy this set and the Batmobile are just going to have him displayed you know, somewhere standing up probably. So it's not that big of a deal, but I just wanted to point that out. But next, uh, we get the Joker, who is epic looking. Obviously, this is one of his disguises in the movie, one of his numerous disguises. And this is when he's disguised as a mime. And he's got the top hat. It's from the, kind of the second act of the film, where he's, you know, um, near, he's, not, he's like on the top of, of the, him and his men are like, um, infiltrating the, uh, the town hall, and they're kind of on the end of the steps, but, um, yeah, he's got the quill as an accessory, which is very violent, that is surprisingly violent, uh, scene, uh, you know, if you know the Batman 89 movie, you know the Joker stabs one of the mob bosses in the neck with the quill, which is very violent, and I'm surprised that they included that, but he's got an exclusive face, exclusive torso, exclusive legs, and he's got, uh, coat tails there, Fabric piece looks great. Uh, obviously, this is made to represent his mime outfit in black and white, which looks so good. And they actually changed his face from the last set, which he's actually smiling differently in this version, which is great. It looks exactly like he did in that scene, which is, again, a, very awesome. Um, but he's got wonderful torso printing showing his bow tie and his, you know, his classic per, uh, you know, black and white suit. He's got the awesome uh, pants design there. And he's even got some toe printing, which is really awesome. And uh, the Joker, this looks great. Obviously, this is a different outfit. This is Jack Nicholson's Joker, uh, obviously. And uh, he looks great. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I kind of wish he would have maybe have, like, an alternate, like a, not an alternate, like a, a dual-molded hair piece with, like, the hair and the top hat. But, oh, well. It's awesome anyway. And, um, you know, the, the Joker is obviously one of the most iconic villains in the Batman series. And obviously, in the Batman movie, he's played to perfection by Jack Nicholson. And this figure looks exactly like him. Like, unlike the, my, the Batman there, this version of Joker actually looks exactly like Jack Nicholson, like, to a T. And which is amazing. But uh, I don't know if he's going to have back printing. I assume so. But don't quote me on that. I don't think, I don't. You know, I don't know. I don't know for sure, but uh, yeah, this Joker is amazing. And if you like collecting different variants of the Joker, then this is a perfect opportunity for you to get a new Nicholson variant of the Joker. And obviously, this is from a very violent kind of scene from the movie, which I'm surprised that they made it uh, because it's uh, you know obviously the the '89 Batman movie is kind of dark and it's obviously kind of violent. But, I mean, you know, this is more for collectors and more for older fans who actually grew up with the 89 Batman movie and Batman Returns. So, it's it's uh, it's justifiable here. Um, but, yeah, and it's just great to have another Joker variant, which is just so cool to see. And, uh, obviously, he's exclusive to the set. And the next exclusive figure is Lawrence, or Lawrence the Boombox Goon, as Lego calls him. Obviously, he's the guy that does the boombox, all the music in the film. And he, uh, I think his most memorable appearance was the, was the Prince Museum scene where Joker's like, let's broaden our minds. And, and he says, Lawrence, and they start the music and they start dancing. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm just a big fan of this movie, like so bad. Um, anyway, uh, so much. Um, but this guy is so awesome. He doesn't have a hair piece because he's bald. He does have, does not have leg printing, but that's fine. Uh, but he does have arm printing showing the Joker cards, and he does have the purple Joker jacket, like just like all the Joker goons in the movie. And he obviously has the sunglasses and the the mustache there, uh, the eighty eighties mustache. And the the Joker henchman looks great. I think, you know, I really love Lawrence, but I honestly would have preferred to get Bob, you know, Joker's number one guy. Um, but I don't. 
I don't know why they didn't include him here. Like, obviously, the, the obviously Lawrence is a great part of the movie, but Bob is, like, the most memorable part of the Joker's gang. Like, he's the number one guy. He's the one that Joker, do, you know, refers to for doing everything. And he is the one that kind of, you know, even fights Batman at one point. And uh, it's impressive how much he, how much screen time he gets. And then, of course, he gets shot by the Joker at the end of the film where the this scene takes place, this Batwing scene takes place uh, where the Batwing is fighting the Joker. But I think maybe it would have been a little bit better if they included, like, maybe the same Joker, uh, uh, you know... If I had to choose, I, I think maybe um, I would have preferred to get, like, the big, the Joker's big, like, gun that he pulls out of his pants. Like, the long gun, the long pistol-like gun that he pulls out of his pants and shoots the Batwing down. Spoilers. Um, but I just, I just really hope that, you know, we'll probably get that at some point. It would be great to have it as a molded thing, but obviously they could do it as a brick-built thing as well. It just, I, I would have loved to see, like, the long Joker gun that comes out of his pants, like, and obviously he shoots the Batwing down. That would have been more accurate, but I understand why they gave us this Joker, because it's a different version, and he's really iconic, and there's probably not gonna be that many 89, any, not many more 89 sets, because the only vehicles in the movie were the Batwing and the Batmobile, so, you know, I think they're, they could do more sets, obviously, and, um, yeah, I'd be down. Um, but, uh, the Joker henchman looks great. Obviously, I would have preferred Bob to, you know, maybe get, we could have gotten a new hairpiece, a new hat, maybe, and, uh, I don't know. But I certainly hope that they have not, you know, given up on giving us Bob, because, uh, that would have been kind of, that would be kind of ridiculous, because Bob is, like, one of the main parts of the Batman 89 movie. Like, if you ask 90% of people, like, what do you remember most about the 89 movie? Well... 90% of them are going to say Bob, or the Joker, or Batman, or the Batmobile, <laughs> but, you know, Bob is in there, and I think this Lawrence Goon looks awesome, I just would have preferred to get Bob, honestly, but that's just my thoughts on it, but those are all the figures in the set, obviously you've got three good ones, you go, Batman, it's not, it's not too bad getting another Batman, obviously I would have wished to have the Keaton lips, and his actual eyes showing through the cowl, but I don't know, I really hope they do that at some point. But if they don't, it's not a deal breaker. It's just something that I thought. But I'm actually going to link a video uh, up, up, I think probably up above here, where Ash and Flash, he actually does, he fixes these figures to make them proper to the movie. Um, I'm going to link one in the description, or, you know, link one up above here in the, in the card here. And then I'm going to link another one in the comments. So just check those out if you want to see the figures, how they're, you know, how they might me be meant to uh, be seen. Uh, but, yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I loved covering these guys. And, um, I, I think I might do another video on the figures, um, similar to Ash and Flash, where I kind of just talk about what I might have changed with these figures. Like, they're incredible. But, you know, they're not perfect. There's room for improvement, as with all things. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind for another video coming up very soon. And, uh... Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the 89 Batman movie. What's your favorite moment? What's your favorite Batman movie? And what's, what figure would you like to see in any of these sets? And, you know, if you had to choose. And, uh, yeah, those are all the figures. You get Lawrence the Boombox Goon, which is awesome. You get the Joker, obviously. Jack Nicholson as the mime outfit, which is very well done. It's probably my favorite figure in the set. And, obviously, you get the Keaton Batman again, which is a carryover from the Batmobile. But... Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to do more videos on the Batwing and the Batmobile. Don't worry, there's more videos coming. And uh, thanks so much. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay safe and healthy. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.